I have been delivering similar messages every time I'm standing here or out there that um, it's a privilege, a rare one for that matter, to save the people. There are 20 million Zambians, 20 million. And people in your role, in my role, in these colleagues' role, the ministers, would you believe it, presidential appointees are nowhere more than 500. Absolutely. In fact, 500 is a bigger number, Mr. Kangu. Presidential appointees. Less than, Less than 500. Out of 20 million people, what a privilege for you to save the people. I think it starts from there that you should thank the people of Zambia for appointing you into these roles. I'm only the agent of the people of Zambia. I think once you get that realization, like I do, I can share with you, every day I remind myself, why me? Why should I be the president of this country? I must work extra hard. I must not let the people of Zambia down. Despite the difficult environment we inherited, we must still deliver for the people. Not in a day, but over time. But it won't happen haphazardly. It won't happen by chance. I don't believe in lucky myself. I'm sorry, colleagues. That's why I don't bet. The baller bet of yours, that stuff you do, I don't do it myself. Because I don't believe in lucky. I believe in orchestrating what you do to achieve the end results, working hard towards that. And I want to ask you to work hard for the people as you execute this privileged position that the people of Zambia have accorded you with. Mr. Banda, two Bandas, Mr. Nasson Banda, the nation expects speed. in that function. You know it very well. You know it very well. You've seen it from the early days. You know how it's been operating. You know how in the last 10 years it was very difficult to operate for a person in your role, which you are going into. It was very, very difficult. But this government, this new town government is facilitative. Please save the people in that space. Save them with distinction. We have all our trust. You have all our trust. All of our trust. You have all our support. Hit the ground running. You come well recommended. Very well recommended. Even by those who don't like you. Because that's how life is, eh? Some people don't like my ears. Doesn't matter how well I behave. They just don't like my ears. That's true. Even colleagues that may not like you, but a good number have said, that's the one. That's the one. So please help us help the people. The rest are High Commissioners Ambassadors. Represent Zambia. You are a subset of Zambia. Don't represent yourself first. Represent Zambia. Then you represent yourself as a subset of Zambia. Distinguish yourselves, please. Distinguish yourselves. You are the semblance of the 20 million of us in the countries you are going. The people look at you. If in every party you are the last one to leave, since you are a diplomat, there are a lot of parties, eh? and you are the last one to leave and you are staggering, <laughs> then they develop an image of us Zambians. You mean those drunkards? You're the last one every time there's a function. They even probably the waiters give you a nickname. By Zambia one. 
In public office, I don't have to teach you anything. You know it. You have to moderate your conduct. That's how it works. Moderate your conduct. We are all made differently. But now you are the mirror of us all in the countries you're going. Manage your temper. Even when you're about to get angry, just hold that bullet. Just talk to yourself. <laughs> no, 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 no. I won't do this. Self-restraint, self-control. That's how it works. Many people think that I'm actually completely naive. They are mistaken. I'm aware. I'm aware of the barrage of insults. I'm aware of the abuse, like yesterday. In the morning, the whole morning, I was being abused, but I say nothing. And I'm aware. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. In the morning yesterday, there was a fracas somewhere. Out of an ordinary citizen who complains, and the complaint is at the police, and the police follow a complaint, and the order is executed, the next thing is a barrage of insults on HH. I have nothing to do. I was not there when they were doing the transaction. Whether the transaction is legal or not, it's not my duty. It's the duty of the police. But you, you, you get hit along the way. And now I think some people woke up this morning with shame. Because when the colleagues went to the police, they said, yes, it's true. So what was all that fracas about? But you take it in. It's part of the territory. It comes with the role that you play. So even you, it will happen. The staff in the embassy will abuse you. Once in a while, it does happen. You don't shout back. Just sit them down nicely. Hey, 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 we're here for a mission. Sometimes your host country, people, individuals, human beings, they are still human beings. So I'm not saying much, but simply represent us in an exemplary way. Once you are done with that, then your core mission. It's economic diplomacy. That's your core mission. Market this country. Join me in the marketing team. Join the ministers. Join the PSC. Join everybody in the marketing team. Let's work as a team. We were elected to reconstruct the economy, first and foremost. Let's not get it wrong. You can't redistribute nothing. First, we have to create. We have to rebuild. Then we can redistribute. Otherwise, we redistribute nothing. The three gentlemen here, you're going to key countries. Economies that have demonstrated success through hard work. Malaysia, China, South Korea, three countries that have taken their people out of poverty within living memory. It's not by chance. It's not that they, they were wishing a good hand. The good hand of the Lord comes when you work hard. So please go and extract value from there. And let's share it with the ministries and us. Give us a call when you see an opportunity. Give someone a call back home. Start it from there, we'll pick it up from here. But also share the message that this government wants joint ventures now. Investor comes, we would like them to work with the local partners to retain more economic value. We want them to value art in our country. We don't want to sell soil because there's some oil in it. We want to sell some value-added product. Send that message early on in the embassy, in the High Commission, as you go for your cocktails. South Africa, <laughs> very critical. It's our largest trading partner. Botswana, Madam Chisanga, very critical. 
If you want to do two things in Botswana, check how they ran their diamond industry, how they structured it. We're grappling now here to generate value. And I always use the Botswana model, that that's the one that we should have used in 1964 here. We didn't. Now we have to recover ground. So we will be chatting with you, chat with the colleagues in that industry. Luckily, they are good people. They are willing to share with us their model. Second thing is that how they have used what we laugh about here, the cattle industry. Before Diamond, it was a cattle industry. But they've continued with it. They export beef. Semi-arid region, you will see, it's a semi-arid region there, most of it. How are they doing it? Most swanas on Friday, they leave their townhouses, they're going into their farms. So if we can pick a few things from there, imagine all the Lusaka people who own small holdings here. Many of these big buanas here live on small holdings, but they live there just as residences. They can't even irrigate one acre. But they already have a boho there, they have everything. So <laughs> maybe we can learn something from our friends there. Serious. Mozambique is a very important country to us, Madam. Chiwa, very important country to us, extremely important. Neighbor, Cabo Delgado situation, part of you going there because you come from the security cluster, it's important that issues there don't explode into us. But more important on the commercial side, Beira is a very important port to us. Nakala is a very important port to us. As we stand here, Mozambique is the, our shortest route to the sea. But we have not developed ourselves properly. We haven't worked with them properly. I took a trip there. They're very, very keen to enhance trade and investment with us. At a presidential level, we have opened the doors. Now, you at the ambassadorial level. Carry on with it. Pass on that Minister of Commerce is not here. Minutes of Commerce and others, and we'll be good to go. You are missionaries. That's your mission. Once more, congratulations. And wish you well. You have our support. Just place a call. Just place a call. We'll be there. You will see where, when you go now, the, the profile of your country in one year, seven months has changed. We are now viewed differently, but better. That's a fact. Are you surprised that we have the first vice president of the World, World Bank? You think it came by chance? No. Are you surprised that we have the first Deputy Director General of the USID Global, a Zambian. Are you surprised? You think by chance? It's by chance? No. You will hear an announcement soon in the security wings. A Zambian is taking over a strategic role, a global role, because we have raised the bar. We have taken the country back in the League of Nations as worthy members. Carry on with that touch. Don't pull us down. You will see many more Zambians now taking jobs in the UN system. I'm engaging directly myself. Minister of Foreign Affairs is not here. I'm engaging directly with the UN Secretary General. We're talking. That's our job. That's why you put me in this office. When did you ever hear neighboring countries saying, can you send us professionals? Other than before their independence or shortly after their independence, this thing had died down. We go to Angola, 
We discussed many things along the way. We secure an opportunity for our citizens to get decent employment to support Angolans, to support their own families. We will be sending medical doctors to Angola. We will be sending nurses. We will be sending teachers. I'm sure you are not aware of that. To create an empl some employment for a fellow citizen here, because Zambians are well qualified. But it doesn't come by chance. It's orchestrated. It's deliberate. So part of your result sheet is to say, what have you achieved 12 months from now? What will you have achieved? Think. When you have done two, three years, you should look back and say, we did this, we did that, we did that. Now we have these things to do, and we'll be there. Deliverables, not working hours. Deliverables. People worry about pensions. I know it's important. Personally, I never worried about a pension. I never even wanted a pension. I said I will make my own pension. But I forgot that the few years I was an employee, my employer was deducting NAPSA, and the NAPSA gave me a surprise. Mr. President, you have got something here. <laughs> Serious. So yesterday I made a commitment to uh, my roommates at UNSA, and I've just decided that cut something from NAPSA, I'm donating it to my roommates who occupy the room that I occupy at UNSA. I haven't even told someone. I've just decided and this is it. From that cut NAPSA, it's going to help those two girls. Somehow girls now occupy what used to be males, male dorms, but that's okay. But the point I'm making is that t set targets for yourselves in line with the country's vision. And you'll be surprised what you can achieve, quite a lot. God bless you all. Thank you very much.